Hello everyone and welcome back to Blender where we are constructing the Enterprise J. I want to go ahead and start off with this episode just to kind of address a small little thing, nothing real major. Um, yeah, I have to first say that I'm kind of flattered that some of y'all, you know, um, you are using these videos as kind of an instructional or tutorial type format and I'm definitely trying to apply to y'all and uh, there's even a couple of y'all that have kind of thought that I'm more of a blender master and everything but I have to say that I'm really not that I'm I always consider myself kind of to be more of just a novice hobby or not novice but a hobbyist but not a professional in any particular way of the form but uh, the reason about why I'm kind of bringing this up is because I've made a uh, kind of a, I'm not going to say a discovery, I've known about it for a while, but, uh, you know, I have didn't really follow some of my own quote-unquote guidelines, and I end up making a lot more work for me a lot harder than what I probably should have. I was struggling on trying to get this ship, especially this secondary hull here, to mod to be modeled and to look just the way that I've been wanting it to look. I mean, if y'all remember from the last episode, me just trying to get these little details here, these little hull details here, was becoming kind of a bit of a nightmare because I had to, you know, extrude and then sharpen the edges and then add in extra edge loops and all this kind of stuff. And didn't quite like the way that it was looking and was getting a lot of anomalies and everything and. And I was doing all of that, and then I, f it finally dawned on me that, no, what I need to be doing is use the subsurf modifier to get the basic shape of it and of the mesh. And then once I'm done with that, I need to apply it and then start working on the small details. It's just like if you were to sculpt, so to say, you take the clay and you mold it to get the basic shape, then you go in and you start chiseling it, you know, using the fine tools. You're not going to use the fine tools to, um, you know, you're not going to do, you know, use fine tools to try to get your basic shape, nor once you get your basic shape, you know, you're going to try to use just your hands to get all those fine little details. So after, and I've kind of, kind of, re-remembered that when I was working on the other ship, the Akira class. So I came back in and I applied it and we've now have an applied subdivision surface modifier on this, which of course created more edge loops, but it makes everything just a whole lot easier in going through and modeling this. So with that being said, I'm able to get a lot more work done on it. We're going to take a look at a couple little details and some of this stuff is still not quite finished. I mean, this is always going to be kind of a work in progress, but for right now, I think that like some of these details, I might go back and try rounding off these edges a little bit. Uh, Cause if you look at the top down menu, we kind of have those. Let me go ahead and go out of, you know, we do kind of have a couple of what looks to be, I don't know if y'all can see it. Let me do this. Um, some of those edges, like right there, looks like it's a little bit more rounded and so is that. So I might go back in and round it, but for the most part, I'm going to go ahead and leave it as is. So let's go back and look into that. It just makes it just a lot easier. Now, it's not completely foolproof because I'm going to have to go in now and clean up a lot of these edges like right here. I mean, you can see how that looks. That's not looking too good. So I need to I mean, from a distance. It doesn't look too bad. But once you start getting it close, you can see it doesn't look too good. So I'm going to have to clean up some of those edges. I'm going to have to play around with the auto smooth on the angles to try to get it to where it will show only the angles you know, sharp that I want and smooth out the rest. And also the way when I apply that subsurf modifier, we can zoom in right here. It does a whole bunch of, you know, um, oh, cats are having a little bit of a fight. Eight. Hey. You know, it starts doing, you can see like right here, there's this little anomaly that's going on here. And if we 
remove this you can see that this edge is coming in over here and this edge is coming in over here so you got some edges which are overlapping because i think if we look at this face here that's one big face but you got another face right there that's underneath that so that's so it's i'm going to be working on you know and i'm going to be trying to do most of this off screen you know, but I'm going to have to go in and clean up some of these edges and straighten up a couple of things, such as like right here, I went ahead and cleaned that up. And for the most part, it's looking a little bit better. I still got some additional work. Like I need to take this. I either need to move this over here or I need to put in another line. But, you know, I'll be toying around with all that. Yeah, you can see these loops here. They're not quite looking very well. So it just, and all I do is just, you know, for like stuff like, um, let me find a better example. I know there's a better example here. So go down to the top down menu. Well, yeah, we'll like look at this one right here. I mean, to do that, to fix that, all it is is just select it, press G twice, just to move that vertice along that edge and just sharpen it up. I mean, you know, if, when you're looking at it from this perspective, it doesn't look too bad, but you know, when you go in edit mode, it just, it just looks so unprofessional. So... I'm doing that, you know, fixing in a couple of those. And I'm also trying to go through and, um, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, not improve, but, um, ah, ah, well, it's all a part of cleaning up, like remove a couple of the edge loops, which we really don't need. Once again, we can go back into here. You know, we got one, two, three edge loops. We don't need all three of those edge loops, you know, so we can get rid of some of those. And for the most part, I mean, once again, that is also pretty simple. Like I look over here, went ahead and got rid of that middle one. I kept this one here. Let's go into, I kept this one in here. I could probably get rid of that one, but I kept this one in here because if I want to try to see about smoothing, Oh, I know why I kept that. I kept that in here for the same reason. If I want to try to smooth this, this little, you know, make this a little bit more rounded. Let's go ahead and go into kind of a side view here, right? Okay. Let's remove that so we can see it better. Um, side view, there we go. I think we're playing around, yeah, right there. As you can see, it's it's just it's flat. But if I wanted to make that a little bit smoother, then I could just go ahead and select this topmost edge. Let's get this one here. This one would give us a better. And I could press GG to move that back just a little bit. And then I can move this up. And then select that and move GG. And then move that back a little bit more. And it just kind of rounds off that edge or bevels that edge just a little bit. So that's why I kept those in there. But let me go ahead and delete all those. But going over here, just to kind of make this more efficient, I just, I'm just i just going to remove that edge. You just select one edge, do a control E, and do an edge loop. I know that there's a more efficient shortcut for that, keyboard shortcut, but I, right off the hand, I don't know. So I press GG. I'm going to move that up to, yeah, I can move it either or, it doesn't really matter. Only time it will really matter if you got to look right down here where it connects and see what these meshes do. It looks like that actually moving that will help kind of repair some of these anomalies here. So move it all the way to the, to the one edge or the other. Press A to select all vertices, Control V. And then just go to remove doubles. And it says right there, remove 10 vertices. So it removed all those vertices. So now this is just one set of vertices there. And it actually reduced my vertice count and my edge count. So it's just going through and cleaning up a bit of the model. But enough about that. Um, let's go ahead and look at some of the details that I'm doing. You know, we got back here. We got, I started working on these particular, uh, the back portion of these, oops, nope, that's not what I wanted. The back portion of these pylons here, where on the back view, it looks like that there's 
some openings. I don't know if that's, I'm guessing that those would be almost kind of like vents to help whatever, whatever type of propulsion system that this is on this ship that kind of helps vent it out. So we're going to work on that just a little bit, just to show you how I did it. So yeah, all it is is just, I take an edge, let's go into face select. And we're going to look on these two faces, like those two faces I want to go ahead and use for this third one. Because there's one, two, three, and then there's this big opening area here. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to select these two faces there. I think that's it. Yeah, that's right. And I'm going to delete those. Just only delete the faces. Now if I do Control R... Am I working on the wrong side? I think I'm working on the wrong side. Yeah, I was working on the wrong side. Let's go back over here. So I can see it. I do a control R and I wanted to scroll my mouse wheel up by three to put in three new edge loops and go into vertice mode. And now I'm going to close this up. I'm just going to select those three vertices, turn these into tries, turn this one into a quad and then turn that into a try and then do the same thing over on this side here. Now I trying to figure out mostly for my benefit while I'm working on this of what this propulsion is and I'm beginning I think I mentioned this in another episode in one of the earlier episodes I kind of see this as being not necessarily the warp drive but this all being a part of the you know, this whole section here being a part of the drive that allows this ship to transport from universe to universe. Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm selecting these vertices and I am pressing GG just to move them along the edges just to kind of give it a bit of a of a rounded look. Let's go over here, do the same thing here. Um, but yeah, the drive here is the universe drive. Uh, what type of tech, what type of name of the technology? I don't know right offhand what I would probably call it. I have a couple of ideas. It's not really slipstream. I figure if you're going from universe to universe, you need something a little bit more uh, beefier and faster than slip slipstream. Uh, so it'd be something completely different. Um, let me see top but I see that I'll be in part of it and it kind of ties into the warp drive and I've kind of liked the idea uh you know where I mean Doug Drexler talked of about and how you know they had you know you know because the pylons I mean has such a small connection to the warp nacelles he almost sees it to where it's almost like bluetooth and even though I'm not going to necessarily say you know, use the word Bluetooth. I still like the idea, and I'm going to try probably animating this when I get done with this model here to where from here to here, whenever they go into a warp drive, energy is transferred from this point to this point. So you can see kind of the energy connection. Think of it kind of like, and I really hate using this reference, but if y'all seen the movie, y'all get what I'm talking about in Star Wars Episode 1, The Phantom Menace, the pod racers, they had that energy connection going from, you know, between the two pods. Uh, you know, I think there's, it's supposed to be kind of a coupler, electronic coupler, but think of it as like, you know, you have this beam that just kind of just shoots out and then it connects to this. And so the energy is transferred across a relatively short distance from here to here. And why they would do that, I really don't know. It's just, it's the future, so, you know, they can pretty much do whatever they want. You know, we can come up, and I can come up with whatever explanation that I want to for the technology that they're using. So, there you go. Okay, so there we go. We got those three. One, two, three. I might have to move them around a little bit to get the spacing right. But I can see that these right here, you know, just like about how these buzz, this these warp grills is to kind of help, you know, cool the... You know, the plasma, as it goes through here, it helps kind of cool, you know, releases you know, releases the energy into the, um, you know, into space for it to cool down. I kind of see that those are 
operating almost the same way. And, you know, whatever type of drive that they're using, I mean, well, it has, I mean, it's obviously it's using up a bigger portion of the ship. So it has to create a bubble through a different method. Cause I see once again, these the cells are for the warp drive and this drive right here is just to go from universe to universe. And so it's two different technologies, but just like about how they can, you know, but they do tie in together similar to uh, the motion picture. They had the phaser power, you know, being channeled through the warp drive. So if they lose warp, they lose the warp drive, they lose phasers, you know, or if the, you know, I think that's what they said in the first movie to where, yeah, when the warp drive went out of balance, they lost phaser power. So, yeah, so it's the same thing. So if they lose this drive, they lose warp drive. They can lose warp drive but still have this drive, but if they lose this, then then they lose lose warp dr drive as well. So, okay. Uh, let me look at something real quick. All right. Now, another little detail that I've been working on, we'll work a little bit more on this right now, is you can see I've started kind of adding in some windows into the front, looking back at some of the uh, other images that I found. It looks like that there are windows in this front portion here. Uh, it looks like there was like a strip of windows here, small strip of windows here, small strip of windows here, and then there was a whole bunch of windows right along here. So I have here my you know, analog for the height of a man and, oh, excuse me, there's the window. So it looks like these windows are about as big as a man. So I, you know, so they're full fledged size windows, which isn't too unbelievable because I believe on the galaxy class, I mean, that's about how big the windows are in the galaxy class. Now these are low poly windows. Some of the windows I'm going to make in some portions of the ships are going to be high poly to where they'll be more rounded off. But with these, I figured, well, you know, from a distance, they're supposed to be just there for look. So for right now, they're just, you know, simple squares. If we go into edit mode, you can see, oops, there we go. You can see they're just simple squares and that's kind of how I did it. And we'll replicate it over on this side as well. And I might just do those low poly, but I might do these with a higher poly count. So we'll see. It also depends about how it looks like. I mean, just like with some of these other parts of the ships, I mean, when you zoom out, it doesn't look too bad. And when you zoom in, you can tell it's kind of low poly, but yeah, you know, it's just right now I'm just going to do low poly. I might go back later and revisit it. You know, and that's another thing that I want to go ahead and kind of talk about real quick is that I've kind of made the decision that eventually I'm going to hit a so-called quote unquote stopping point for this particular ship. You know, and what I mean by a stopping point is that it's, um, oh, I just, okay, here we go. I had kind of had a brain fart right there is to where I will get to a point to where, you know, I'll be happy with the ship. To where you know I can go ahead and release it, you know, for everybody to use. But it's always going to be kind of a bit of a work in progress for me. Let me do this, okay? To where it'd be always kind of a bit of a work in progress because I'm always going to try to go back in and try to you know continue to work on it. I mean, it's like the first version I release out is going to be not low poly like video game low poly, but it's not going to be super high poly to where it'd be a quote, unquote, where it could be used as a quote unquote hero ship for, you know, for a fan series. If somebody would like to use that for a fan series, uh, let's see how many windows do I have over here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. I think I did 32 over there. So let's do 32 over here. Um, it's, it's, it basically, you know, the way I look at it would be kind of a, let's put a few more windows over on this side. It would be kind of a ship that you could, I mean, you could use to where you could get the camera in close to it at first, at first. It's a ship to where you can, you can get the camera in close and you can see some, you know, interesting details, but, you know, once you get past that, you're, 
you know, you're going to want to, um, let me, whoops, got to delete those as well. Let's see, let's try it. Do I delete these? Yeah, I could do that. Good. This just limits the height of the windows. Okay. I do the same thing. Wait, what happened? Huh. Something, something weird here. Really? Oh, let's fix that real, real quick. Uh, but that's kind of, oh, ah, darn it. There we go. So that's kind of the way that I see it to where, you know, it's going to be released, you know, think of it version one, version two, version three, version one is, you know, to where it, it has enough detail to where, you know, you can use it into your, your movies or, you know, you can use it into a, oh, come on, I'm trying to find this thing, dang it. You can use it in pictures or what have you, and it will give you, you know, a pretty good amount of detail, you know, but it's not going to be, it won't be held up for scrutiny, you know, then maybe version two, you know, will have a couple of errors fixed that I've might have found over the ways. And then version three will be a slightly higher poly model, you know, and then version four, you know, would be kind of the hero ship to where, you know, you can really get in close and see a lot of the details, so on and so forth. And that and that's just assuming that down the line, nobody else bothers, you know, working on it. Because, you know, I mean, maybe once I release the basic model of it, you know, some people might want to go ahead and download it and do some of their own work on it or, you know, maybe use it as kind of a, a jump off point to, you know, make their own fleet of ships or what have you. So, you know, it's, sky's the limit, you might, you can kind of say so. But that's kind of my idea about that. So, all right, so let's see. We're going to go ahead and join all these to the center of how we're going to do it. So eventually there will be a stopping point to where I won't be doing this episode no more as a regular series. I mean, we'll I'll do a couple of episodes where we'll kind of come back and you might say revisit it. And you know, probably document some of the process as we go from version to version of the Enterprise J. But it's not gonna I'm not gonna be working on it, you know you know consistently because you know, I'm always improving on my ideas. I mean, it took me this long just to get this far on the ship and the only reason about why I've actually stuck with it for as long as I have is, you know, mostly because of some of y'all guys where, you know, y'all you know messaged me and told me, you know, hey, you you like this, you like this, you like the episodes, you like the series, you want to see more of the ship and all this type of stuff. So, you know, it's it's kind of given me a little bit of encouragement to continue on, you know, and, um, you know, but this, the Enterprise J has always been, you know, a work in progress for me. And I think it's always going to be kind of a work in progress for me. Uh, one day, I mean, it will be completed or one day I might end up just, you know, dropping off the face, you know, not dropping off the face of the planet, but I might just stop completely. Uh, let me see if I did one, two, one, two, one, two, whoops, two, one, two. Do I even have 30? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty. 18, 19, 20, 20. Ah, dang it. Did I get, did I cut my... Yeah, I did cut myself short, but it doesn't look like that's as big. Let's see, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Actually, that look looks like that might work out all right. So let's go ahead and put lights on on all those. Yeah, I may go back to probably add a few more windows. Well, maybe not. Let's see, how well does that look from a distance? Uh, maybe I might shrink it up a little. I might probably add maybe about, see if I could squeeze in two more sets of windows in there. So I'll move some stuff around. So I'm going to do the same thing right along there. And that's going to be more along the lines of to where there'll be, 
mean, it looks like if I keep the windows that big, I might do three decks. So it'd be three decks worth of windows here going from all along from here to here. You know, so that's going to be quite a few windows to model. Um, and the only reason about why I'm going to do model those in and not texture them in is because from the pictures you can see that there's obviously light coming from those. We're going to want those to be, you know, illuminated. And, um, oh, that'd be another thing that I'll probably do on one of the other versions is I'll take some of these windows and I'll extrude them in further. Wait. Ah, dang, nebbit. I miscounted. I'll fix that later because, yeah, I went one, one, two, one, skip two. So you skip one, do two with the space between, skip two, and then, yeah, yeah you can see it goes one, 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 two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one. You know, yeah, there's three there, and there should be two spaces in between every two windows. So I'll fix that later, and I might squeeze in a couple of more windows. But, oh, well, anyways, moving right along. Uh, you know, that might be another thing that I'll probably end up fixing later on down the line is I'll probably take some of these windows and actually move them in, doing a kind of an extrude, and then putting in a translucent mesh from the front and then kind of put in a lighted background in the back to kind of give it to where, you know, and that would be once again on the high poly model. So if you're zooming in here, you don't see white, you can actually see a bit of a hallway back in here. So I'll make that translucent, that translucent, make all these faces translucent, but then put a box behind it that ties into these four points and texture that into kind of a hallway. So when you see it, look through there it'll be a you see the actual hallway and as you can move around the hallway kind of moves around with a little bit of depth of field but that's not going to be in this version that'll be in a future version so all right so go, go ahead and finish this up here then we're going to go ahead and call it quits um said so apologize for those of y'all that are following it on regularly and the schedule is a little bit hectic and you know I mean I'm not gonna I'm not trying to make excuses but uh, you know you know it's just a lot of stuff's just been really kind of going on I had some weddings to go to but um, you know so and those weddings have been out of town and you know a uh, couple of tests that I've had to go to for my martial arts school that I run and, uh, you know, hence my name, B. Bell Dan, you know, uh, work and all this type of stuff. So it's just, there's been a lot of times where by the time I come home, I've just been kind of exhausted and tired and haven't had really much of a time to really kind of sit down and work on this. But I've also kind of started I know I'm very bad at this but I've also started another project this one's not going to be a video project but hopefully you can see it in a video later on and it, hopefully it might not be even one of my videos it might be a different you know another person's video so uh, more details about that it's not a paying job it's just it was kind of a challenge that wasn't issued to me directly but it was kind of issued via video that us that I watched and I some reason I felt like, you know what, huh, I take that challenge. You know, they, it was kind of like a, they really didn't challenge, but it was like an open challenge and I decided to take it. So hopefully, you know, it'll turn out well and you might see that in the video. And if you do, I'll post a video talking about the project that I'm doing with the link to the video where you can watch it. So, but until then, yeah, we're going to go ahead and call it quits right now. Yep. Yeah, we're getting about almost 30 minutes in. So, I'm going to go ahead and work a little bit more on this. So, and said, I'm pretty sure that now that I got this, you know, the subdivision surface applied, I'm going to be able to go through a lot of these details very, very fast. So, hopefully, we should be getting pretty close to where we can start texturing and I can start doing some tutorials on how to, to texture the ship. I know that a lot of people ha usually have trouble with texturing and back in the days when we when I was making you know model ships for Star Trek Armada you know I've had a lot of people sit there and tell me that they really liked my 
the textures I put on my ships and they wanted me to do texture tutorials, but this was on forums before YouTube. So, you know, I'll show you what I kind of do uh, on texturing. So we'll get to that. But until then, I just want to thank you all for watching. This is B-Belt Dan. This has been Blender. And this is the Enterprise J. And I will see you in the next episode.